Well, good morning, everybody. It's 6 a.m. on a Saturday. We've got to run into town to take care of chores and get some provisions for the week. But before we do that, we got to cut some meat up. All right, we have a pound and a half of Milanesa, which is top round, thinly sliced beef. And we're going to be cutting this into strips so we can start on some jerky. Now, the ticket to cutting this type of meat for the purpose we're making is to cut against the grains. Because if you cut with the grains, it's going to be a tougher, chewier bite. If you cut against grains, it's going to come out nice and tender, and you're not going to sit there chewing on the thing all day. And just like that, we have our meat cut up. Now, you take it also another thing to cut this meat up is to try to trim out as much fat as you possibly can. Get nice little one quarter inch thick slices that are sitting here, time to make the marinade. Now, I make this marinade stuff, you can use a sealed container, but in this case, we have a gallon freezer Ziploc bag, and we're gonna be adding our mixture into that with the meat. First thing for our marinade is going to be three quarters of a cup of Kigamon teriyaki based and glaze. We're going to go ahead and put that inside the bag. Nice and carefully around here to make a huge mess. Like I said, you can put this in a, I don't know, Tupperware, but I found out the best results is going to be inside of a bag. Next ingredient. Two-thirds of a teaspoon of garlic powder. Also two-thirds of a teaspoon of onion powder. Two full teaspoons of black pepper. Yes. Jerky wouldn't be jerky without some good pepper flavoring in there. One full tablespoon of hickory flavored liquid smoke. Ooh, Blaze smells the goodies. Gotta keep his nose out of here, he'll snatch it off the table. All right, so next we're gonna add, I don't know, just kinda eyeball it, a few heaping spoonfuls of lightly brown sugar. We don't make a huge mess here. This is gonna be caught on you how much you want for flavor. This is what's gonna add to that sweetness into the bag. All right, last couple ingredients. We have some regular soy sauce here. We're just gonna kind of eyeball it, put it in there. Not too much, just enough just to add that little bit of flavor. Last ingredient is a product called Prog Number no. One, and this is pink curing salt. This is not a product you're gonna find on your regular grocery store. Uh, I found this on Amazon. It was only like about eight bucks. What are Prog number one curing salt? It's going to allow longer shelf life uh, for your product. I'm gonna go ahead and just by hand mix that product, all that good stuff together, so we don't have any lumping in there, no concentrate, little areas. And then we're gonna dump our meat in here and mix all the goodies together in a pool. All right, here goes our Milanesa, top round into the bag what I want to do is I want to fold this bag down we want to try to trap all the air out of here as much as we possibly can get it all out zip tie it really 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 good together and just use our hands mix all that meat ingredients together so everybody has the same chance of having that delicious flavor and there you go, there's our product. We got about a pound and a half of Moniza, which is a specially thin cut from the butcher of top round beef and everything. You've seen the marinade and all that. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this in the refrigerator from six to 24 hours. And we'll be back and we'll make some jerky. Good morning, friends. It's Sunday morning. It's a beautiful day here in Western Kentucky. In the low 70s, sunshiny. It's time to make some jerky. Okay, well, we've been marinating our special meat for a little over 24 hours, and I've had it sitting on a shelf for just a little while to come up to temperature. Let's get our dehydrator ready, as well as our little workstation. I'll show you how we're gonna go about doing this. So we're gonna be doing this cook outside and everything. I have some aluminum foil down on the table, as well as doubled up paper towels and everything, and one of our first racks for our beef jerky. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these pieces of meat out, we're gonna pat them dry, 
as we can to get as much of that soaking marinade off of there before we set them down onto the rack. All right, so we got our first rack ready to go and stuff. We're gonna go and set this down on the table inside and continue with the rest of the batch. Bang, just like that. That batch rendered about three full racks. We've got our Kasuri dehydrator sitting outside. Let's go ahead and get these things set into place and start drying. So here's the Kasuri dehydrator. We're gonna open this up and go away flies. And you can see down at the bottom, we've already generously put some aluminum foil down in here just to help with the cleanup, if there's any kind of drippings, whatever, let's get the bead in there. Now it's time to set our Kasori at 165 degrees. And we're gonna set that for exactly two hours. Okay, well that's gonna go at 165 for two hours. Now have two hours, we'll check back in with it, see how it's going, and probably at that time we'll drop the temperature down to 145 for about another hour. I got chores to do, I'll catch up to you in a little bit. All right, we made it through our first two hours of our cook with a beef jerky at 165 degrees. So before we check on that delicious smelling beef jerky, about an hour into the cook, I took and pulled the racks out and flipped each and every individual piece of meat. They stuck just a tiny little bit to the rack, not very bad at all, not enough to tear them or room or anything like that. And now for the rest of the cook, they're not sticking to the rack any longer. A lot of people seem to think you need to spray some sort of a cooking oil or something on those racks. I disagree because I ultimately think the outcome and the flavor of the meat is gonna be altered from that spray. That's why we didn't go in that direction. Let's go check the jerky. Holy smokes, will you take a look at that? See, nothing sticking. Now, ultimately what you want to have happen to this jerky is you want to be able to bend it and have it crack, not break. If it bends and breaks, it's way too overdone and too dry. So now that we've got it at two hours at 165 degrees, we're gonna put the beef jerky back into the dehydrator and cook it for an additional hour at 145. Man, that looks good. We've dropped our temperature 20 degrees down to 145 on our Kasori food dehydrator and set it for an additional hour. Man, it smells good. It looks good. I can't wait. If this is your first time attempting to make beef jerky, there are things to remember. This is a patience game. Don't ever set your dehydrator to the highest temperature and think you're going to get it done and it's going to be perfect. It doesn't work that way. That's why we're kind of doing this in little steps as it goes always exercise food safety that means don't make up your marinade and put it in a bag or a container and set it on the counter overnight that's going to allow bacteria to set up it has to be in the refrigerator anywhere from 6 to 24 hours don't ever over marinate this stuff like for a week because your meat will start souring and we don't want that and you have to throw the whole batch out not to mention the fact that if you want success every single time start with small batches and check periodically until you have the results you're looking for Oh boy, the timer just went off. We've done three complete hours on the cook of our jerky and stuff. We're gonna pull these racks out. We're gonna set them on the table inside, bring them up to room temperature before we do anything. Wow, will you look at that? Oh my goodness. I don't wanna to touch any of this stuff right now without gloves. But we want to make sure that the stuff all comes up to room temperature and I'm going to explain to you exactly why. Here's the reason why we want to bring that jerky up to room temperature. If you take that product out of the dehydrator and just throw them in bags or in storage containers, what's going to happen is it's going to end up trapping moisture and oxygen and making it so the shelf life on that product goes way down. And once the jerky is at room temperature, it will be the final product and consistency, the tenderness, that it will stay until it's consumed. 
So we've reached our desired room temperature. Watch, remember I was telling you about people wanting to put cooking spray on these racks and stuff? Nonsense. Remember I told you an hour into the cook, we pulled all this out, we flipped them over, none of this stuff is sticking. See that? It peels up perfectly. The racks have barely any kind of color at all on them. I believe you put cooking spray on here, it's gonna end up burning its way into discoloring the racks. Let's go ahead and get this stuff into a basket and give it a try. Wow, will you look at the color on that? That is beautiful, beautiful looking jerky. And as we bend it, if it snaps, it's too dry. It just simply cracks. See that? That's perfect texture. Now, some of these recipes I saw, they said put it at 165 and run it hard for six hours. So if you do that with this kind of jerky, it's gonna be dried up mess and it's gonna be garbage and go throw it away. All right, time for the taste test. Ooh, look at that morsel. Mmm. First thing that's hit me is that teriyaki. And then that brown sugar. And that hickory smoke. We're right at the back of your throat. A little tiny bit of that pepper. Wow. This is delicious. Oh my goodness. Mmm. Mmm. Exactly how you want jerky to taste. Mmm. All right, one last thing to do. Let's package some of this stuff up. All right, so we got some Mylar bags here. And we're going to fill up a couple of these. Oh, this stuff is really, really good. Ho, oh, you wish you were here. Nice. See that? Oh, yes. All right, we ended up getting seven bags. Next thing we're going to do is add our little oxygen absorbers into each one of them. So that batch yielded seven bags of delicious beef jerky. We've squeezed all the air out of the bags, put our oxygen absorbers in there, and ziplocked them shut. Now it's time to seal the bags with our film sealer. All right, we got one last thing to do is to put our trademark on these bags. Well, hey, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks so much for hanging out and watching the video. We're going to call this inaugural batch Sweet Kentucky Mountain Teriyaki Beef Jerky. And you folks that are in the viewing area would like a sample of this, simply email me at thecreativeoutdoorsman at gmail.com. Send me your name, your shipping address, and I'll get some out to you as soon as possible. I also have five of those pouches reserved for five of you lucky viewers out there, and you just don't know it, and they'll be out sent your way sometime this next week. Got any comments or questions, leave them down below. Until next time, I'll see you on the outpost.